Welcome to Educator.com. In this lesson, the laboratory review, we're going to discuss the laboratory component of an AP Biology course. Starting out with Lab 1, Diffusion and Osmosis. In the first part of this laboratory, you explored the process of diffusion. And during this lecture today, I'm going to briefly review the concepts behind the lab, but in earlier lectures, we've already gone through each of these concepts in detail. And then I'm going to talk about how, uh, what you should focus on for the laboratory. So just to briefly review the concept of diffusion, in diffusion, substances move down their concentration gradients. So they move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. And this is a result of the random movement of molecules. That information is given in more detail in the lecture on transport across cell membranes. And we talked in that lecture about different processes of transport across cell membranes, including diffusion. Now, in this lab, you used a bag made from dialysis membrane. And what is important to know for the lab is that dialysis membrane is semi-permeable. meaning that small solutes and water can cross it, whereas larger solutes cannot. So in this lab, what you did is you took dialysis tubing and tied it off to form a bag. Inside the bag, so you have this bag made out of dialysis tubing, and inside it, you're going to place a solution of glucose plus starch. And to confirm the presence of glucose, you tested it with either test tape or another strip that allows you to test for the presence of glucose. So you confirm that there is indeed glucose in the solution. Next, what you should have done is filled a beaker about two-thirds full with water and to that of distilled water distilled water and to that you added a solution of IKI IKI is iodine potassium iodide. And it, you add the IKI to the beaker and it's going to turn a yellowish color. It's sort of a more of a brown or orangish yellow, a darker yellow. You also tested this IKI water solution for glucose and it would have tested negative. So there's no glue, I'll put a negative here, negative for glucose, whereas in the dialysis bag, you did test and there was indeed glucose. Next, what you did is you would tie off this bag and it, at this point, the fluid in this bag is clear and you place the bag inside this beaker. And so we will make that clear. Then you wait 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, what you'll notice is a color change. So after 30 minutes, the solution inside the bag turns a bluish black color. Now, why is this? Well, it turns out that in the presence of starch, iodine turns this color. So iodine plus starch turns a bluish black color. Now, thinking about the overall concept behind the lab, why, what's occurred? Well, remember that this is a semi-permeable membrane and small molecules in water can move across the membrane, larger molecules cannot. And at the beginning of the lab, what you did is you tested for glucose and we found no glucose inside the bag Oh, excuse me, glucose inside the bag, no glucose in the water that was just in the beaker. Well, at the end of the experiment, you again are going to test 
the solution in the beaker. And this time, you're going to find that there actually is glucose in the beaker. So the results. The bag, the fluid in the bag turned bluish black. And in the beaker, we now have glucose. So think about what happened, where did the molecules go, where did they move to? Well, in order for the solution inside the bag to turn bluish black, starch had to be there, and so did iodine. So iodine moved into the bag. And we started out with glucose in the bag, but not in the beaker. So glucose moved across the semipermeable membrane into the beaker. Starch, however, is too large, too large to cross the semipermeable membrane. And how do I know that there's not starch out here? Well, remember that there is this iodine solution out here. And it's if starch had managed to cross the semipermeable membrane and ended up in the beaker, then the, star the solution out here would have turned bluish black. So this was the first part of the lab on diffusion and osmosis. So that was the diffusion part. And the second part of this lab was on osmosis. So let's now focus on osmosis. Recall that osmosis is the diffusion of water down its concentration gradient. And water is going to move, therefore, from a region of higher water concentration to a region of lower water concentration. Another way to look at this is in terms of solutes. So if I have a container, and inside the container is some, are two solutions, and they're separated by a semi-permeable membrane, where water can cross, but solutes cannot, and on one side, I have a higher solute concentration than the other, what I'm going to see is that the water is going to move from the region of lower solute concentration to the region of higher solute concentration. And again, this is a concept that we covered earlier in the course when we talked about transport across cell membranes. So what you did in this part of the lecture is that, again, you used dialysis tubing. And you made six bags from the tubing. So in the osmosis component of the lab, you made six bags, six dialysis bags. And you filled one with distilled water, and then the others with various concentrations of sucrose solution, 0 0.2 molar, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and on and on up to one molar sucrose. So you filled these bags, and you, you then weighed the bag. So you filled the bag with distilled water, another bag with 0 0.2 molar sucrose solution, 0 0.4 molar sucrose solution, and you cross, uh, you um, weighed the bag. You determined the mass of each bag. Now, sucrose cannot cross the dialysis membrane. So you have this bag filled with the sucrose solution, and sucrose cannot cross it, but water can. Then what you did is you placed the bags in beakers filled about two-thirds full with water. And then, so here you have water in the beaker, and inside the bag, either sucrose solution or distilled water. You then wait 30 minutes and weigh the bags a second time. And you should have left room in the bag so that water could enter the bag via osmosis. So again, you have six bags filled with different solutions, either just regular distilled water or various sucrose solutions. You weighed those bags. You place the bags in beakers partly filled with distilled water. You waited 30 minutes, and then you weighed the bags again. And what you're going to see is that the change in mass was greater for bags with a higher molarity of sucrose. And the reason is that more water would enter the bag if it had a higher concentration of sucrose. So just like I showed up here, water is going to move from areas of lower solute concentration to higher 
solute concentration. And that's gonna ha what's going to happen with these bags. And the more water enters the bag, the greater the mass will be. Now, recall some terminology. We say that when we were talking about cells earlier on and taking a cell and sticking it in some type of solution, we said that if the concentration of the solution is hypertonic, we're saying that it has a higher solute concentration than the inside of the cell. And water is going to leave the cell, the cell will shrink. In a hypotonic solution relative to the cell, that means that there is a greater concentration of solutes, or a, a lesser, excuse me, hypotonic. Hypotonic means that there is a smaller, lower concentration of solutes outside the cell than inside. In this case, water is going to move into the cell, and the cell will increase in volume. Finally, recall that in an isotonic solution, there's going to be no net movement of water because there will be movement of water, but it, there's no net movement. So overall, the cell will remain the same in size, in volume, because the concentration of solutes inside the cell is the same as the concentration of solutes outside the cell. So hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions. These are concepts you should definitely be familiar with. Finally, for this part of the lab, what you did is you graphed your data. And on the x-axis, you put the molarity of the solution. And on the y-axis, you graphed the change in mass. And again, this will help you visualize that the change in mass was greater for solutions in which the molarity of the sucrose is greater. As part of lab one, first